Hey, um, it's getting a little colder, so now I have to wear a, a hat and gloves and stuff. Uh, I'm wondering whether I'll be able to continue to do these videos in the snow. I might have to, uh, I don't know, figure out some other way to do them. But, uh, and uh, the last few days, every time I've tried to start one, it's uh, gone badly. I mean, I've just said something stupid or I've rambled like I'm doing right now. Anyway, today I want to defend the meta-ethical proposition that every ethical system, not just every ethical system, every ethical theory, more or less by definition, assumes an ought. Assume that people, or the people to whom the system applies anyway, the people to whom the theory applies, the uh, actors being governed by the ethical proposition, ought to do something, and that this ought is ultimately assumed. It is either a first principle with no other justification behind it, it's either axiomatic, or else it is not an ethical theory. And, uh, or else it's totally unjustified. It's either not, you know, it's either assuming a not, or it's not an ethical theory, or it's unjustified. And I'm going to defend this by basically agreeing with David Hume that there's this thing he came up with. Well, I don't know whether he came up with it. That's a historical question. Something that he wrote about called the is-ought problem. The is-ought problem, in short, is that any claim of obligation that we should or ought to do something cannot be logically derived from what things are, or at least from physical facts, or from, for Hume, sense data, sense data, qualia, whatever you want to call it. We cannot derive an ethical obligation from a physical state of matter. Logically, I mean, no ethical obligation can be logically deduced from a physical state of matter alone. Any logical argument which has an ethical obligation or, or judgment in the conclusion, if it is logically valid, must have a, a uh, ethical proposition being a an obligation or a judgment in the premise. You cannot get to ethics if you don't start from ethics. Ethics is, in this sense, always a you know ethics is always a subject which is logically self-contained right? You can reason from, say, something in Newtonian physics to something about the game of pool, for example, right? Because uh, they're, both, uh, they're both physical facts. But you can't reason from Newtonian physics or, or I guess, the Copernican, the Copernican revolution. The Copernican theory is probably a better example. You can't reason from the Copernican theory that the Earth goes around the Sun to the moral judgment that the Earth is any less important. Or the size of the universe is another example. The fact that we're a tiny speck within the enormity of the universe does not produce any ethical conclusions, right? Because uh, the size of something does not make it more or less morally valuable right? Because if bigger things were more important 
than tiny things, you know, like a galaxy versus a small planet, then we would expect that small differences in size would be just as much accompanied by small differences in value as large differences in size would be accompanied by large differences in value. And this means that big fat people would be somewhat more valuable than skinny small people. And that makes no sense. So any attempt to derive an ethical obligation or value or judgment from a physical state of matter is always uh, can always be reduced to absurdity. And that is the is-ought problem in a nutshell. Now, there are a number of what I would call moral nihilists, um, people who are logical positivists, who pretend sometimes to be utilitarians, who basically say, you know, if it can't be proved scientifically, then you shouldn't believe it. Well, first of all, they don't practice that in their own life. That doesn't refute their theory, but it might show that their theory is not practical, that you can't, that you can't really live it, right? The fact that they don't personally live it doesn't refute it, but the fact that we can't really live it does cause some problems for it, okay? So don't, don't think that because they don't live it, it is uh, therefore invalid. That would be the ad hominem fallacy, and I almost stepped in it just now. No, no, no. You can't live only by beliefs which are provable scientifically. For example, um, I have to put my socks on in the morning, right? And uh, I, am, I am totally, based on totally unjustifiable faith, trusting that my socks are still in the drawer that I put them in last night. Okay? Even though that's not been confirmed empirically by anyone else. It's a totally subjective observation I've made that I put them in the drawer last night. Okay? There's no empirical justification. But I have to live with the conclusion. Because I don't live in a laboratory. Okay? Life isn't a science experiment. Okay? Life is life. And so I'm really sick of the... Uh, being surrounded by logical positivists when I'm trying to be an ethicist. You know, it's, we're, it's, it's playing a completely different sport, first of all, and second of all, it's just plain ignorant and not how you actually live your life. There's many reasons why logical positivism, as I have encountered it, makes no sense. I can only hope that as the theories held by more informed uh, academics, there's maybe some, you know, some way of making it at least more tenable, um, if not more logical, <laughs> you know, but uh, tenable, I mean practical, I mean something you can actually, you know, producing some sort of rule you can actually try to live by. Anyway, I guess I'm getting off subject again. Uh, the point is, anytime you're going to do ethics, you start from an assumption of an ought, of an ought statement, like people ought to treat each other fairly or justly under some definition of justice, right? You, are, you have to assume some kind of standard of values in order to, before you get to cases, right? Before you get to um, whether any particular action is right or wrong, you have to assume as a premise with nothing behind it, that people ought to behave in a certain way and ought not to behave in a certain other way. There's no getting around that. Not since David Hume, anyway. Even natural law theory, which is some, you know, which I would hold, which sometimes is stated rather clumsily, you know, some natural law theorists try to get around this. You can't do it if you're going to hold natural law theory as I do then you have to assume it.
There's no arguing for it. There's no arguing for utilitarianism either, right? Utilitarianism, supposedly scientific value that you ought to work for the greatest good for the greatest number, is assuming an odd. It's assuming you ought to work for the greatest good of the greatest number. It's no scientific experiment. There's no mathematical equation. You can type that in and then suddenly it goes, bing! It's like, oh yes, it's confirmed. No, that's not, that idea is not falsifiable. You have to assume it. And, certain, and so all ethics is based ultimately on some kind of faith. That doesn't mean it's subjective. It just means it's not falsifiable. Right? Anyway, we're getting into this more another day. Gotta go to lab now. <laughs>